the atheist Christopher Hitchens, you know, about 15 years ago, somebody shoved, uh, you know, somebody asked him, what's the most, what's the best argument for the God side? He said, the fine-tuned argument. And he said, it is the idea that if, if things, you know, as science examines something, they notice that, gee, if we're just a tiny bit this way, we're a tiny bit this way, life couldn't exist. When you start studying the fine-tuned universe, you start studying the uh, you know whether it's the 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 Big Bang or or the 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 Earth or life or wh wherever you look, you start saying, this is so exquisitely perfectly designed that it it's an argument for God that's just breathtaking. We now know. Now we didn't know this when a lot of us were kids, but we now know from science that if the Earth this is really simple, right? If the Earth were the tiniest bit smaller, I don't mean way smaller, I mean just like a 4%, 5%, something like that, tiniest bit smaller, we wouldn't have the sufficient, what they call a magnetosphere, to retain the atmosphere that we have, and therefore you'd not be able to breathe right now. Wouldn't that be uncomfortable? You think it's hard sitting through church and you're able to breathe. Can you imagine if the Earth were the tiniest bit smaller, Science knows this now. That like, huh, coincidence. It just happens to be big enough to have an atmosphere so we can breathe without thinking about it. And we don't think about it, do we? We take it for granted, don't you? You don't go like, wow, amazing, I can breathe. Atmosphere, cool. We don't even think about it. But science says, well, if the Earth were a little bit smaller, like Mars, zero atmosphere. But here's where it gets creepy. If the Earth were the tiniest bit bigger, same thing. Science now tells us, this is science, this is not Christians, this is science says that if the earth were a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, we could not have the atmosphere that we have and life would not be possible. Well, you think, well, gee, isn't that what a great coincidence? Aren't we lucky that our planet just happens to be exactly the right size for this atmosphere and for life? Isn't that, isn't that lucky? And you think, yeah, you could think it's lucky, or you could think it, it appears like maybe it was designed. But we don't want to believe that, because that would mean we'd believe in God, and that's repulsive, so we'll reject it. We'll, we'll call it luck. But science discovers other things, and other things, and other things. Wherever science looks, it discovers, gee, that's creepy. It's exactly, it looks exactly fine-tuned. The existence of the moon. How many people are aware that we have a moon? A, lo a lot of you. A lot of you, yes. Uh, well, did you ever look up at the moon and think that if the moon weren't there, we couldn't be here? We never think of that. You never even occur to us, like, why? I mean, it's nice. It regulates the tides. Well, that's, that's pretty big, but you don't care about tides. But let me tell you something. We now know, and again, this is in the last 50 years since Time Magazine's article. We now know that the moon, if it weren't there, and if it didn't have the size that it has, the, or the moon is an outrageous anomaly in our solar system. I mean, if you look at other planets and their moons, the, our moon is gigantic compared to the size of Earth. I mean, it's really, really big, right? Uh, when, when you think of the size of Earth, it's you know 2,000 miles across, and Earth is 8,000 miles across. It's huge. Science now knows, without any doubt, that if it weren't there, we couldn't be here. We now know that the moon regulates the rotation, that our wo the wobble of our rotation without the moon would be so outrageous that there is just no chance that we would be able to have any kind of the climate or atmosphere, anything that we have. So there's another thing you think, wow, great coincidence. How lucky. Those are just two obvious things. But science, as it has improved over the decades, think about this, right? Science has gotten able to see more and more on the microscopic level, on the, the level of you know better telescopes, better microscopes. The more we could see with science, the more we could see how perfectly designed everything is. Those are two obvious examples. Another one which is really bizarre. Well, let me tell you something. That pinprick of light in the sky called Jupiter, it is 400 million miles away. The, the sun, is 93 million miles away. Jupiter is 400 million miles away. So it's so far away that it's inconceivable. But it is so large that the gravity from Jupiter and Saturn to some extent is so powerful 
that it pulls away meteors and asteroids that would otherwise strike Earth. They are pulled toward Jupiter and they either hit Jupiter or, or just move in that direction because of the gravity of Jupiter. And science now knows that if Jupiter, that little pinprick 400 million miles away, if it weren't there, about a thousand times as many asteroids and meteors would hit Earth. And science knows that if that were the case, we wouldn't be here. Or you'd be really jumpy, look, looking up all the time. Like what? But the fact of the matter is that we don't even, th who thinks about this? Who thinks about, hey, how awesome that that little pinprick of light 400 million miles away is there because science now tells us if it weren't there, we couldn't be here. We, we just kind of take it for granted. But if you start studying the science, it begins to freak you out. It's like, well, that's interesting. It's almost as though somebody put it there. It's almost as though somebody designed the solar system for our benefit, but that couldn't be. We don't want to believe in God. That's like obsolete. You know, that's medieval, right? We don't want to believe in that. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's amazing that everywhere you look in the universe, you see this kind of evidence. Now, if, if a meteor about the size of this sanctuary, about 180 feet, maybe something like that, that happened in uh, Tunguska, Siberia in 1908, right? We know this, that a meteor about 180 feet in diameter, which when you think of the size of the earth, that's like unbelievably tiny, right? It's like, like a grain of sand. But it hit a remote area of Siberia in 1908. Just that size. That's just one, okay? And the effect of that one meteor of that size was so outrageous, okay? It came into our atmosphere, that size, about 35,000 miles per hour, and exploded about five miles over the surface of the Earth in this very remote section of Siberia. And the power of that explosion was the equivalent of 1,000 Hiroshima bombs. It instantly flattened 80 million trees. But science knows the devastating effect that they have, okay? And we now know, oh, oh yeah, because of Jupiter, 400 million miles away, that's not happening very often. So we're not nervous about it. We're not jumpy about it. We can exist because coincidentally, Jupiter just happens to be there protecting us, you know, like running interference, right? But everywhere we look, we see these evidences of design. You don't need to have all the answers. You never will and I never will, but we know enough to say that the God of scripture who died for us on the cross, who defeated death, on the cross. That's not a metaphor. He defeated death on the cross. He has given us enough information to live out our faith with utter boldness, with no fear about speaking the truth, especially at a time when people are being told, hey, shut up. When you're told shut up, whatever they're telling you to shut up about, make sure you scream about it as often as possible. Live out your faith with utter boldness because God has given us evidence on a level that if you don't, it's on you. We have no excuse.